Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, I've got a comment in the YouTube channel and down in the and down in the in the uh comments about the SSH and how to use Bitvice uh and some of the other things like that. So, I'm going to open up Bitvice here. There's Bitvice. So, um, someone made a comment about Putty and Bitvice and you know things of that nature, and I just wanted to say that your SSH, you can use Putty, you can use Bitvice, uh, you can use the terminal in Linux, or you can use the terminal in OS X. All of them give you ways to connect with Secure Shell host. Um, so SSH is just a way to be able to securely connect to another computer with authentication. Uh, so if you're used to the world of Linux and, and, and the OS X type stuff and Unix and even right now like Raspberry Pis because Raspberry Pis run a version of Debian um, which is Raspbian um, so people that have done that stuff is, are very familiar with SSH and setting those servers up on those devices now for free NAS now I know I have not done a free NAS setup video for, for um, how to set up your SSH, so I'm going to do that right now. So inside of FreeNAS, you want to make sure that you're in your local FreeNAS box. So I'm on my local FreeNAS box right now. I'm going to go here to Services. So you can see I have Services right here. And in my Services, you want to make sure that SSH is turned on. And to configure it, I'm going to go here to the Settings. So SSH Settings. And you can see I'm using TCP port 222. I could change this to whatever port that I want it to. And then I'm going to log in as root with a password. So that's checked. And then I can allow password authentication. And that's checked. I'm not going to do any port forwarding because I'm not doing this outside of my network into um, my local network. So I'm not going from a WAN to a LAN. And then compression, um, compressed connections. I don't really need to do that because I'm local. And if I turn on advanced, you can see I could bind an interface to this. So um, EM0 is the one that is basically how I get into my um, FreeNAS box. So I could bind that to that. So if I had two NIC cards, which this, this FreeNAS box does have two NIC cards in it, and if you wanted to bind a specific one to your SSH uh, protocol, you could. And I don't want any logging or anything like that, nothing extra. So if you're just looking for basic SSH setup, all you have to do is just come in here and um, you can be whatever port. So port 22, I want to be able to log in as root, that's fine. And then allow password authentication, that's fine. Hit OK. And it'll save that stuff out. Now, once that saves that, all you have to make sure after that is that SSH is turned on. If SSH is turned on, then when you go to use your client, your SSH client, whether it's Bitvice or Putty or whatever, you would type in the host IP address. And my local host IP address for my uh, SSH server for my FreeNAS box is the same number that I use to actually access the box on the local network. So in my case, that is 10.1.10.16. And then the port it's going to be port 22 and then authentication it's going to be root and then whatever your root password is so for me I'll just type in my root password and when I hit login you'll see it logs me into my FreeNAS box so it logs me into my FreeNAS box so this is the SSH uh, command line interface so this is the CLI for SSH and the cool thing about Bitvice that I like is it also gives you a, um, a SFTP, a secure FTP into your SSH client. So you can see right now, this is actually the, the root structure of my FreeNAS box. And you can see everything that's on my FreeNAS box. So you can see I'm looking at stuff that's in my FreeNAS box. I've got my own cloud, I've got my web, and there's my Plex Media Server. All that stuff is actually visible to me in this SSH. Now, I will tell you, when you are working with SSH, 
and you're working with your SFTP and you're logged in as root, you want to be very careful. Um, I've, I've made this mention before and I, I kind of got um, smacked on it a little bit, um, but I think it's very important. I think it's very important to know how root works. Many people that are come from the Windows world, they're very used to logging into their computer and half of the time their computer is logged in as an admin. So you're logged into your computer as actually an admin user. In the world of Linux and Unix <laughs> and BSD, that's kind of like a no-no. Um, I'm logging in as root on my free NAS box because the things that I have to do have to have root privileges. But if you are if you mess up something, so if I were to come in here and say new SFTP window, and I was to delete something in here, I could do real irreparable harm to my configuration and to my free NAS box by just randomly deleting things inside of here. So, or moving something inside of here by accident or on purpose because I am logged in as root and inside of your SFTP, it's not gonna tell you that you can't do that. If I wanted to take this, e this uh, ETC folder and move it inside of the lib folder, I would be able to do that because I'm root and the system is not going to warn me that what I'm about to do could be detrimental to the system even starting up. So I would suggest that you be very careful when you're logged in as root. The other thing is, is that commands that you execute, you know, make sure that you know what you're executing. So when you first start off inside of FreeNAS and you're talking to your jails, you're going to do a JLS just so you can list off your jails. So you can see I've got all these, I've got six jails that are running currently. One jail has MySQL, t a test version of it. One, one jail has actual MySQL in it. One has NextCloud. One has um, Plex Media Server, Transition, or Transmission rather, uh -huh, and then Sync Thing. So these are the six jails that I'm currently running. And then to get into a jail, you want to do J, Execute, and sometimes you have to give it the, the, uh, the command line um, that you want to use like so CSH and I'm gonna do two and sometimes you don't have to do it so and that's weird why is it doing that to me let's see J execute and just do two huh that's actually very odd don't know why that's giving me an error. Give me one second here. So if I look in here, boop, 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 it said J execute, let's do one and then let's do CSH. So there you go. So just make sure that you do your, um, basically your, your, your uh, bash protocol type at the end of that. So you're going to do J execute one, and then this is the terminal type that you're going to be using, which is CSH. So it's just that simple. Um, I can also still do my JLS command, and you know I'll see now I'm actually in that because I'm not in the root anymore, right? So that's something to be aware of. But other than that, th that's really how you set up SSH and how you are able to log in. Um, to your server once you have turned on SSH for FreeNAS. If you look inside of here, there are actually quite a few services that FreeNAS can run. Um, I'm running things like NFS, so I'm running Network File System because I have some Android boxes on the network and it's just easier, it has less overhead than um, something like Samba. And I've got WebDAV that I have set up, I've got iSCSI set up, and all these things are running from my local FreeNAS box. Uh, I could even run FTP from here. Um, so you've got a lot of different things that you can do in here. It's really nice because if you, if you have a DNS server set up for this, and I'm thinking of doing a dynamic D DNS server um, and showing how to do that, because I've been teasing for a couple of months on building a OpenSense or a um, PFSense router, probably going to be OpenSense. Um, so I've recently 
gotten some machines. Um, two were purchased and two were donated. And I'll have links to where I got those from. Uh, they were an eBay find, but what we'll talk about in the vi in that video is what to look for if you're planning on using. And in my case, what I've done is I've used an existing thin client, so I've used an old thin client, old HP thin client, and turned that into a router. And the cool thing about that is is that I have way more power out of that than I would, you know, any off-the-shelf router. Now the setup for that is a little bit more uh, in depth because you will have to know a little bit about networking to set up your network yourself and to harden your network. Uh, I'll also be showing how you can set up a VPN so you can protect your privacy and data when you're online because right now data privacy is like a huge, huge thing. Um, and it, I think it will be moving forward. Data privacy and, and, and big data is, is something that's very uh, interesting for a lot of different people. So until next time, hopefully this was helpful in, in being able to help you set up uh, your SSH and being able to get in so that you can do the rest of your commands and, you know, start making some jails on your free NAS box and start doing some really cool um, replication here on your free NAS box. So until next time, have a great day. And if you like what you saw here on the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you feel the need to, then leave a comment down in the comment section. So until next time, my digital mutants, it is I, Dr. Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media.